Hello, Rec Ball enthusiasts. Welcome to another week of Full Court Press. I'm here with Jack McGinn, Alex Badger, and Quinn Donovan, and I'm Will Schiffman. Um, it was a great first week of Rec Ball. Um, there's nothing like a new season, and uh, let's get right into it. So, one of the first games was Corey versus Barry. Jack, what did you think of it? Uh, I thought it was about what we expected. Uh, Corey struggled a lot with the press of Barry, and they struggled without Jack Choate down low. Uh, Barry brought their press like we expected, and Corey didn't have the ball handlers to, to handle it. Yeah, Corey's got a lot of bigs with uh, Choate, Brothers, and uh, Ed Lee, but I think that Osiel's going to have to step it up for them to have a decent season. And, you, know, you can go ahead. And, you know, I was talking to Tyler Nagy about this. Tyler Nagy thinks that team could be one of the greatest rec ball teams of all time, and he's throwing it out there like that. I'm not sure about that, but I think they could pose some serious problems for teams in the league. I think it's tough to beat the Adam French, Dave Bellevue championship <laughs> team. Just because you're on it. I mean, <laughs> I, just, not just because I was on the team, but I don't know. French and mm. Bellevue were an absolute force. Bold words from from the man that te his teammates call the sloth in Tyler and Agee. <laughs> and, uh, but Team Barry, definitely one of the favorites for this year. But it was interesting to see Team Corey play without the Chotes because, I mean, Jack... Jack's probably one of the guys everyone wants to see this year, and I mean, he's making his return to basketball after a long break, and uh, he's a big-time athlete, but everyone wants, everyone wants to see what he can do on the basketball court as a 6'6 giant. Yep. And I think one of the biggest upsets of the week was Croft over him again. Uh, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't know what to say about that, but uh, I think that it was more of a loss for your team than a win for Croft. Uh, I'll just say... The, uh, t Coach Croft had a great defensive strategy going into that game. We heard they were going to go 1-3-1, one, one, and we thought it was going to be more of an extended trap, so we prepared for that. But then they packed it in and handled it, handled us uh, defensively very well. And uh, I'll just say I don't think Fruit and myself will combine for 18 or less the rest of the year. Mm. That's what I like to hear. Mm -hmm. I don't think you guys can win a game if you do combine for under 18. You guys need to... The big problem with that was you guys struggling to put the ball in the basket. And once you guys get some scoring in, you should be all good. Yep. Dynamic duo has got to keep stepping it up. But you did bounce back, though, with the win on Monday night. That's definitely a good thing to see. And then we had Grossman versus Last. Uh, not, a, not two great teams uh, playing against each other. Um, I think Grossman's going to struggle this year. Uh, their top guy is uh, Kevin McCarthy. Um, it's going to be a tough season for them. We'll see. I mean, Coach Grossman thinks he can get everyone rallied together. We'll, we'll have to see what he can do. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're struggling right now. We'll have to see if Eric Gould can step up and um, just some role players kind of make an impact, see if they can get out of the hole. Yeah, we got to see if they can play with a chip on their shoulder coming in through the end of the season, see if they can play with a little confidence as they pick up a couple wins. Yeah, they were uh, they were ranked last in the Rupert Gubert power ranking, <laughs> but I I would say they're I don't think they're the worst team in the league. So uh, oh, I'd agree with that. I don't think they are at all. Yeah. And we saw they lost that game to team last, who was led by Kevin Flayhive in that one, who uh, obviously had some extra bonus rocking the Air Monarchs mm. from <laughs> maybe from maybe the best shoes in the league. Probably nineteen hundreds version. <laughs> Um, yeah, and they. I think uh, Kevin and uh, Will played pretty well together, missing uh, Sternberg as he let everyone know in the Facebook group that he <laughs> did not play because of a knee injury. Um, so it was a good win for uh, Team Last. And then we had uh, Gilbo play Philbrook. Um, that's a that's a junior heavy team in Gilbo. Um, Badger, you being the junior of us, what do you think of that team? Yeah, I think it's really interesting to watch as people like the Kaplans and Aria make adjustments into rec ball from school ball. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see the effect of that and how they're playing together. This team is is a bunch of really solid guys who can all play together, so it'll be interesting to see how that meshes throughout the season. Yeah. And yeah. I'd say I love the drafting strategy by Coach Gilbo. I mean, draft a bunch of juniors that know each other very well and – they may not have a ton of height, which is what everybody notices right away when you see that roster. But, I mean, they got a bunch of strong guys, and they got people to – the camaraderie on that team is really going to get them places. Yeah, a lot of chemistry on that mm -hmm. team. Uh, Philbrook is off to an 0-2 start, not looking too hot. Um, they're, they're leaning a lot on, I'd say, Matt and 
I don't know. It's Jerry Boyer. Jerry Boyer. Yeah. Jerry Boyer has, has consistently been a great rec ball player with uh, Frenchie last season. Um, I think that that's Jared's going to be a huge part of this team. I think in order for them to catch a win, though, they need to rely a little more on their role players mm -hmm. and not be so top-heavy. If they can get the role players the ball and get them some points early, that could be a huge play for them. Yeah, Jack mm -hmm. McCarthy, you got to get him involved. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, Rhythm could really step up for them, too. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. a pretty fundamentally sound player. Big body down low. Yeah. 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 Uh, so then we had Hogan versus my team. Uh, it was kind of uh, it was what I expected to happen. It was a pretty uh, sloppy game. It I was a slot. So. Oh my god! It, to the start of the game, it was very. There was little scoring, but then we got uh, we got it going. Team Schiffman did did not come out of the gates running. No, so, we did uh, not. Definitely, as you guys picked up the press, kind of got things rolling. But uh, Team Hogan, we're gonna have to see what they can do. Noah Burrell played pretty well, and um, but Ryan Primo is gonna really have to take over, and they're gonna have to get some more production from the rest of their team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then we had Zach Walker's team and Kelly and against Townsend, and I think that Walker is proving himself to being one of the best players in rec ball. I mean, 28 points, that's, that's getting up there for a first week. I don't think anyone in the league is capable of guarding him when he's at his best, yeah. and I think he'll probably end up being the most valuable player this year. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see the way teams start playing defense on him to try and match up against that, whether it's a box and one, whether they go zone and just try and stop the inside game. It honestly may have to be a double team on him. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. there's not one person that can cover him in this league. But I don't think his his team gets enough credit in the fact that, I mean, Pat Kelly is a great rec ball point guard. And yeah. I mean, if you put too much attention on Zach, Pat's going to beat you every time. Yeah. And so that that's what really makes that team lethal. And Coach Kelly's going to see that, figure everything out along the way. and um, But definitely I'm excited to see what that team can do and to see what Zach can keep going with. And uh, Team Townsend, um, there's really nothing they could have done to play Zach. Yeah. But um, And especially missing Jeremy James as your best player. I'm not saying that he's going to be a Zach Walker stopper, yeah. but he could have put out a better effort for Team Townsend. Made it there, a so it's, it's tough to really see where they're at and where they're going to be going for the rest mm -hmm. of the season. Yeah. Uh, so then we had Capello versus McElhaney, which was, honestly, I did not see this result coming in Capello winning. Yeah. I thought that Frenchie was going to have to score 25 at least to help his team win, but he showed that he had some role players around him in the Kumars and uh, some other uh, key guys. Um, and I was surprised that Eli couldn't get it done for his team. Uh, he got outscored by Sid, which yeah. Sid's a solid mm -hmm. player, but... Eli seems to be uh, a little too confident, maybe, in the Facebook, at least. Yeah, well, I mean, he still looks good. I mean, he had, like, 16 of the first 18 points, and him and Sid combined for, like, almost all of their points, so I think that's what it's going to look like all year for them. But you're looking at Eli. He's got to be a big presence down low, and he's got to play big, especially with new guys like Zach Walker in the league. Yeah. He's not just going to be able to get by by pure strength anymore, so he's got to just watch it. And play. Oh, yep. I think it's great to see. I mean, French played great. He only put up 15 points, or only. I mean, that's a great game. But, I mean, um, he didn't seem, He didn't feel like he needed to take every shot. He had guys that he could give the ball to, and uh, guys that would give the ball to him when he's open. So yeah. that, that was a great game to watch as far as it goes with with him really not thinking he has to be the only guy. Yeah. Um, and then we had uh, Bersani against Meyer. And uh, Bersani looks very good. Uh, him, uh, Pete, and uh, Brendan are looking like a very good dynamic duo. And I would say that's the deepest team in the league, that's from my perspective. I mean, they have a ton of big, long guys. And I mean, they play a super zone, and everyone's got their arms out. Like, that, that's going to give rec ball teams problems. Yep. They don't know how to break a zone well enough. And, I mean, uh, with Brendan, obviously, one of the best players in the league, Pete stepped up. He had 20 this weekend, and uh, that team just looked great. Luke. Yeah. Brendan's going to get his, and Brendan's going to score his points when he needs it. But if Pete can step up for that team and keep putting in numbers like this, they're going to be a real threat. Yeah. And I mean, if they both combine for 40, that's a solid team. Yeah. And mm -hmm. on the other side, Team Meyer, uh, Zach Levine looked pretty good, but they were missing Alex Mack, so maybe they would have been able to keep it closer if he were there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we had two Monday night games this week. It was, uh, obviously, the big one was Team Barry versus Team Last, which, yeah. as in big, I mean a big mm -hmm. margin of victory for <laughs> Team Barry. And, I mean, Team Last put up 15 points. Yeah. 
one of the worst showings of all time. Yeah. I NFL. mean, in in last defense, they were missing Kevin and Sternberg, but 15. I mean, like, my God, that's, you got to get the ball in the hoop at some point. Yeah. yeah. Look, and there are also some accusations of running up the score on Team Barry. <laughs> I am not surprised, but I'm oh, also man. I'm also in favor of it. I I <laughs> like. <laughs> the aggression, I like the competitive nature, especially in Joey Kurtz's new standings. That's going to pay off well. Yeah, yeah. Look, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> got to yeah. do it. Uh, for Team Barry, Charlie Snow looked really good. Uh, that was a little bit of a a sleeper pick there. He he's uh, might have been one of the steals of the draft. Mm. That is that's also a deep team with the Sullivans and Tyler and Ag. Yeah. Um, I think that that's going to be. I, they're proving to be one of the better teams in the league right now. <laughs> and then, Jack, what did you see from your team on Monday night beating Team Philbrook? I mean, Prune. Prune just went uh, full-on Prune. He, yeah. he almost had 30, and he hit five threes. He didn't miss. Yeah. I was going to – we were writing the predictions, and after Sunday, your prediction was not looking too hot. <laughs> so I had to absolutely change it and go a full 180. I mean, your team came back and showed that you can't just judge a team off of one week. Yeah. Mm. They, Prune's got to be consistent, though. Yeah. You, you can't be an elite rec ball player and have nine points some games and 27 some games. Mm -hmm. So if he can just step up and get those high teen games pretty consistently, you guys are going to be in a good spot. And Philbrook is now at 0-2, which is not looking good for that team. They, they've had some tough competition, though. When mm. Prune drops 30 on you and you play Team yeah. Gilbo in the mm. other game, it's tough to, tough to read too much into it early on. Yeah. And uh, I'd say next week we got, or not next week, the week after, because we don't have games next week. Christmas, uh, yeah. yeah, and Barry versus Bersani will be one of the bigger matchups so far this season. I'd say from right now, I'd say definitely the biggest yeah, matchup. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's two alpha teams in this league that I yeah. think are right now are the two strongest teams. And I mean, that's it's week two, and there's a ton left to happen. But I mean, I'd say. Team Barry and Team Bersani, after week one, looked like the best teams in the league. So who are your picks for that game? Um, I, I'm going to go with Bersani, the new guys in the league. I think Brendan and Pete are too much to handle for Team Barry. I agree with that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think Team Bersani, Barry's going to press them, and Bersani's going to have to find a way to get out of that. But I think Brendan, as a ball handler, is very good in, um, in rec ball. And, I mean, I think Team Bersani's length is going to give Barry issues. And, I mean... Uh, on the defensive end, I think Barry's going to struggle to score. I think it's going to come down to a late fourth quarter three or buzzer beat or something, but it's going to be an exciting game. All right, uh, that'll do it for us this week. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks, and uh, have a good week. None of you else gave a salute. I was in <laughs>